Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at the 19th century dominance of the electric car. While a popular claim among car companies and advertisements today is often that they've invented the first commercially viable electric car, in fact, electric cars were at one time more popular than gas-powered ones. For instance, in 1899, 90% of New York City taxicabs were electric vehicles. This fleet of electric cars was built by the Electric Carriage and Wagon Company of Philadelphia. Not only that, but in 1899 and 1900, electric cars outsold all other types of cars, such as gas and steam-powered vehicles. In 1902, an electric car, the Baker Torpedo, became the first car to have an aerodynamic body that enclosed both the driver and the platform. This car at one point reached 80 miles per hour in a speed test before crashing and killing two spectators. It was later clocked as high as 120 miles per hour, but with spectators not invited this time. Electric cars got their start in the early 1800s. Early efforts were more or less proof of concept inventions, with limited speed and range, as well well as using non-rechargeable batteries. However, in 1842, two inventors separately created the first practical electric cars with rechargeable batteries. The inventors were American Thomas Davenport and a Scotsman Robert Davidson. Over time, improvements were made by various inventors, improving charge capacity of the cars, making better electric motors, and things of this nature. What really eventually jump-started the popularity of electric cars was in 1880, when Thomas Edison was awarded the patent for the carbon filament vacuum tube, a practical light bulb. As these bulbs became increasingly popular over the next couple of decades, so did the widespread distribution of electricity, providing the infrastructure needed for the electric car to be viable for the general public. The electric cars had no vibrations from the engine and were extremely quiet compared to its competitors. They also didn't emit smoke or backfire frequently, as did gas-powered cars. They were also ready to go right from when you sat in the car, unlike gas-powered cars that needed to be cranked by hand to start. This was not only difficult, but could also be dangerous. Steam-powered cars, on the other hand, at the time took up to 45 minutes to get going on cold days. The other large advantage with electric cars was not having to change gears, which was a hard thing to do in early cars, but something that wasn't necessary in electric cars. The only real advantage that gas-powered cars had at this time were the long ranges they were capable of with larger tanks and the ability to fill up quickly when the tank was empty. However, because at the time there weren't a lot of well-developed roads for cars to drive on safely, most people only drove cars in cities anyway, rarely traveling long distances. Notable popular electric cars of the 1900s were the Columbia Runabout, which could go 40 miles on a single charge and run at an average speed of 15 miles per hour, which wasn't that bad at the time. The 1914 Detroit electric car, which had a range of 80 miles on a single charge and was the favorite car of none other than Clara Ford, Henry Ford's wife. He bought the car for her despite the fact that at the time his company was presently breaking the balls of the electric car industry. Another great one was the American Morrison electric car, which was capable of ranges of up to 182 miles on a single charge. It was also capable of 14 miles per hour, which again isn't notable by today's standards, but that 182 mile range certainly is. Cost for a basic model electric car in the early 1900s was about $1,000, with more lavishly decked out models costing closer to $3,000 a piece. Now enter Henry Ford and a few other factors, and we'll see the downfall of the electric car. By 1915, Henry Ford, due in part to his innovative assembly line construction and other organizational and technological advances, was able to offer his cars at around a base price of $500 a piece, equivalent to about $10,000 today, which made it affordable for even average people, something that had never been the case before with cars. In contrast, at that time, the average price of an electric car had steadily risen to about $1,700. This was also around the same time crude oil was discovered in Texas and Oklahoma, which drastically reduced the cost of gasoline so that it was now affordable to the average consumer. In addition to these factors, Charles Kettering invented the electric starter, which eliminated the need to hand-crank gas-powered engines. 
Roads began expanding, spurring the need for greater range that only gas engines could provide at the time. This was not only because of the range factor, but also because gasoline cars were now becoming significantly faster than electric cars. By 1935, the electric car was officially dead, and wasn't revisited until around the 1960s, and then still unsuccessfully. It's only until very recently with the Tesla company that electric cars have once again become successful. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, do give us a like below, and do subscribe to our channel. We put out brand new stuff just like this every single day. Big subscribe button below me now, which you can click on, and all of that stuff will go right into your feed. Over there on the right, a couple of other videos you'll probably enjoy if you enjoyed this one, and thank you for watching.